This video is sponsored by Envato Elements. What's up everyone? Hope you are all having great holidays and wish you a very happy new year in advance. Since this will be the last video of this year, I felt about wrapping it up in style. And what can be more stylish than cyberpunk themed artwork? I always wanted to create a cyberpunk artwork based on games like Cyberpunk 2077 or franchises like Alita Battle Angel or Ghost in the Shell. But I was skeptical if I could pull off the complexity of the sci-fi world building. I was also very much inspired by the neon themed artworks by Phase Runner to try out the genre. So I finally decided to give it a try and see if I could create something decent. Now about the composition, I overdid it with the total time being more than 25 hours. So in this 20 minutes video, I will skip the usual stuff like placement and color grading, but I will try to explain in detail the new things that I did and implemented in this artwork. Alright then, let's get into it and let's create. I wanted to create a close-up character edit for this piece. This cyberpunk themed character model from Envato Elements instantly caught my attention and will form the heart of the composition. After dropping her into Photoshop, I started drawing out some perspective lines, which will be very important for the buildings to align correctly. I set the horizon line and the vanishing point pretty close to the crown to match up with the viewed from bottom look of the scene. Here the magenta lines will form the vertical sides of the building, the yellow lines will form the horizontal sides of the buildings, and the sand lines will help align them to the vanishing point. After quickly extracting our subject, I used the polygonal lasso tool to block off the general shapes of the building. I just paid attention so that the sides line up with the grid as I mentioned earlier. These buildings are just personal artistic expression and will change as the composition progresses. I dropped this cargo 3D asset and tried to sample different areas to create the left frontmost building. I mostly used the free trans from Distort tool to align the textures to the perspective grid. For the faraway buildings, I started with creating a basic patchwork texture by sampling various skyscraper images. I added them as a clipping mask on the shapes I drew but distorted and adjusted to match the perspective grid at the same time. I experimented with several city images to fill the midground. I made the windows of these midground buildings a bit narrower as they will also convey a sense of scale and the faraway windows will definitely be smaller than the windows in the nearby buildings. I also removed some windows from this building as it looked too much lit up. I dropped some other city images to fill up the background. I like the negative space with the opening of the sky, so I let it be. I definitely spent quite some time to correct the individual faces of the building so that they line up with the perspective grid. I started compositing the foreground by placing various sci-fi objects that I downloaded from Envato Elements. No cyberpunk city is complete without flying cars. So I dropped these 3D assets of a futuristic car and painted over it to remove the wheels and add some customizations. took several other cars at a slightly different angle to match the perspective and give them the same treatment. I cleaned the frontmost buildings a bit and added a quick curves to match it with the rest of the scene. I replaced our subject's head with this way cooler looking Sub-Zero style mask from the same model and now it's time to add some cybernetic enhancements to her. I downloaded several robots from Envato Elements at the required angles and sampled different areas to create the cyborg arm. I kept experimenting with the hand area so you will see a lot of back and forth.
I didn't like how she held the hollow hilt of the sword, so I replaced her hand with a separate image and will soon make the hilt solid. Her leather outfit looked kinda out of place, so I added this robot torso as an armor. I also customized her outfit by adding some armor platings on the legs, sampling images from this robot. It's very difficult to get stocks for cyberpunk artworks, and this composition would not have been possible without the assets from Envato Elements, who is also the sponsor of today's video. The excellent high quality photos of these cyberpunk themed characters instantly formed the base of my composition. And when I teamed up the photos with a massive library of sci-fi 3D assets, things became really exciting. These 3D assets are mind-blowing as they can be rotated at an angle matching the perspective of the scene, and they are also pre-cut out which saves a huge amount of time. But Invato Elements is much more than just stock photos and 3D assets. It is the perfect one-stop shop to satisfy all your creative needs. You can get thousands of royal trophy music and loads of motion graphic templates and stock video footage that has been an essential part of my videos for the last year. Along with that, you have a wide array of fonts, add-ons, graphic templates and so much more. And you get unlimited download access and commercial licenses to everything with just a single subscription and that too for less than $20 a month with their 50% discounted yearly plan. Instead of paying $33 every month in the monthly plan, you just get to pay $16.50 per month in the annual plan. Which again, you can cancel anytime if you want. If you think Envato Elements is for you, you can use the link in the description section of this video to get your subscription today and unlock unlimited creative assets. Alright, with the character customization more or less done for now, I proceeded with the color grading. I quickly added hue saturation adjustment layers on the building layers to create a base blue color cast. Then in between the multiple layers of buildings, I washed some blue violet colors on layers in normal blending mode to add the atmospheric perspective and depth. Then on separate layers in color dodge blending mode, I gave a wash of bright neon colors. The shapes of the buildings can get diluted in these color washes, so it would be a good idea to block out the shapes of the sides with maybe a polygonal lasso tool and highlight or darken them to make the structures more defined. I added some light beams coming from below as not only they will help add drama to the scene but also help make the building's shapes stand out. I tried to keep a gradient in the color so that it helps break the monotony of blue and pink. I cycle between linear dodge, color dodge and light and blending modes to see what works best. Also as I kept stacking the lights on separate layers, the blending modes interacted with the underlying light layers and created unique colors and patterns. I was not happy with the orientation of the bionic arm, so I experimented a bit over here. I darkened up the foreground objects by adding some quick curves and dragging the RGB curve down. Next I found these cool renders of sci-fi corridors on Envato Elements and instantly got the idea to use them to replace and create the front left building. This simultaneously saved a huge amount of time in fine-tuning what I had made earlier. I used curves to quickly darken the structures and also add a dark blue color cast. I also added some ambient highlights on the foreground structures as I darkened them up. Here I spent some more time blocking out the shapes in the buildings and added differential colors to make the structures defined. 
Well, at this point, it occurred to me that I made a mistake in the platform's perspective. So I dropped an image at a different angle and tried to create a patchwork fixing the angle. I started color grading the flying cars. I darkened them up using curves and also added a blue color cast. Then I clipped a layer in color dodge blending mode and added a glow on the bottom. Next I added a bright red color again using curves and used it to create some light trails. It might not be realistic to the scene but surely looks pretty cool. Added another curves adjustment layer to create a bright green blue hue and used it to create a glowing trail around the exhaust and around the car's interior. Once happy, I added some motion blur matching the perspective grid. Time to create some fancy neon signs. I quickly created a Japanese katakana script for a hotel and flipped it as I will place it behind the character. Then I added a cocktail of layer styles, mainly outer glow and drop shadows in different shades of pink and blending modes like linear dodge, color dodge, linear light to achieve the glow effect. Then on the layer mask, I added a halftone line pattern from the filter gallery to achieve the scan line effect and give a holographic feel to the hotel sign. Also added a little bit of motion blur to stack up the holographic effect. With the light sources more or less defined, I started painting highlights on our subject. I used curves to create bright color passes and paint on layer masks in appropriate areas. I used different curves for the pink, blue or the red clothes. I added a quick glow on the sword blade using a layer in color dodge blending mode but I will change it to something else later. I cleared up the groove in the sword and painted some red light on the cargo at the right to match the red light that is already falling on our subject. I painted some light reflections on the platform floor as I wanted to create a rainy scene. I filled the layer with the color black and changed its blending mode to linear dodge and then with the color of the light I painted the reflections. I experimented with placing more light shafts so that it can help make the subject stand out from the dark background. Next I searched different neon and LED signs and placed them mainly in color dodge and linear dodge blending modes. I also tweaked the colors to pink or blue wherever necessary with huge saturation adjustment layers. After that, I added a little bit of lens blur to simulate the depth of field. The more the objects receded into the background, I added a greater degree of lens blur. Then I customized the sword a bit by narrowing down the groove. And then for the claw of the sword, I used a technique that I learned from Max Asabin. I created a gradient map in the color of the glow, then put a solid black layer beneath it and then grouped the gradient map and the black layer and changed the blending mode of the group to screen. Now I painted in any layer in between the previous two layers with color white to control the glow color. You can check out his channel Asabin Art if you want to learn this technique in detail. Then I added a basic color grading using a color lookup table set to Fuji Real of 500T but masked it at only required areas. I also added a curves on top of it having boosted highlights but darkened shadows and lifted the blacks. The orange glow on the sword looked kinda out of place so I changed the gradient map to get some violet indigo hues.
Along with that, I added some more customization to turn our subject a little bit more cyborg. Finally comes the rain effect. I dropped a rain texture which also matches my perspective and changed the blending mode to color dodge. I found color dodge to react better with the underlying lights and create a sharp bloom. I manually masked out any traps that seemed bigger and out of place. Then came one of the most time consuming part and that is to create the water splashes and drips. I dropped various images in color dodge blending mode and masked them out at appropriate places. At the same time, with a moderately hard round brush, I added some water dripping down various objects. As the water splash took too much time, I created a custom scatter brush and painted in more splashes. The drips and splashes felt like a never-ending process, so I had to take a decision on when to stop. I created a snapshot of everything, went into the lens correction under filter and added a red sand chromatic aberration. Then I added some noise and a little bit of zoom blur from radial blur on the peripheral areas. Finally, I added some extra dash of colors with a combination of color lookup tables. I added edge ember, teal orange plus contrast, and fall colors, and changed the blending mode to color. And then I painted on the layer masks of these three LUTs until I liked the result. So here goes the final result. If you liked the artwork, please don't forget to like the video and share it with your friends. If you found the video helpful, do let me know in the comments. And if you like my overall content, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That would greatly motivate me to create more videos like this. Well then, I will see you in the next video. And till then, enjoy creating.